I'm B. Cody. And I'm Ashley. Whether you're remodeling your entire home or just sprucing up a room with a fresh coat of paint, we're going to show you how to do it right. If your home feels cramped and dark, you may want to consider demoing a wall or two. Removing walls lets in more natural light and makes the house feel larger and more inviting. Back in the 1960s, when this house was built, they put walls everywhere. Yeah, I'm in the kitchen. Ashley's just right there in the living room, and there's a darn wall in the way. By removing this wall, we're going to create an inviting open space, perfect for quality family time and entertaining guests. We want to be safe when we're demoing a wall, so let's make sure that we have all our safety gear before we start. It's demo time, baby. Slow down, Cody. We can't just start slinging sledgehammers. What if this wall is holding up the roof? That is a great point. When it comes to houses, exterior walls do a lot of the heavy lifting, but interior walls carry some of the load as well. Knocking down a load-bearing wall would be a dangerous mistake. To check if this wall is load-bearing, I have to crawl up in the attic to see if the wall we want to tear out is supporting the roof. So there's where the wall is, and I don't see any support structures directly tied to it. If the truss is connected to the wall like this, then we'd have a load-bearing wall. I also took a look at the crawl space, which wasn't the most glamorous job. I looked around for a bit, but I didn't see any signs that this was a load-bearing wall. If this was a load-bearing wall, it would have blocks or supports like this to carry the load down to the ground. Another way to identify a load-bearing wall is to look at what it's made of. If the wall is built with 2x6 boards and contains stud packs, which are groups of boards nailed together to support a lot of weight, then the wall is probably holding up more than family photos. It looks like this wall is not load-bearing. Well, what about this light switch? There's got to be wires in the wall if there's a light switch. Another great point. To see if this light switch is live, we're going to use this voltage detector. Just touch the pin to the switcher outlet, and if it lights up and beeps, the wires are hot. Hey, Ashley, cut the power to the light switch, please. Got it. Now that the power's off, we're going to take the voltage tester, put it back on the switch. If it stays green, the outlet's safe to work with. You can find one of these voltage testers at your local Lowe's Home Improvement store. We also check the wall for plumbing by looking under the house and in the attic to see where the pipes are located. And from what I could tell, this wall is pipe free. But to be on the safe side, we're going to take it slow. By carefully removing the wood paneling with a pry bar, we can see what's inside the wall and avoid damaging any plumbing or electrical wires we may have missed. So what do we do with these electrical switches? You know, I'm not sure where they're gonna end up, but they can't stay here for now. So we'll detach them, roll them up, and safely secure them from the ceiling. There are many ways to take a wall out. There's the sledgehammer approach. The kick the wall down technique. But one of the best tools for demolition is this right here, a reciprocating saw. There's lots of different blades you can use for this saw. We're using a demolition blade, so it can cut through wood, metal, or plastic. Now, if you feel the blade binding and catching, that stud you're cutting might be carrying a structural load. So if you feel that, stop immediately and re-examine the structure. As you're removing studs from the wall, watch where you're laying the boards. It's common for people to trip or get poked with nails because they're careless with their demolition process. We found it easiest to use the reciprocating saw to cut through the nails or screws holding the studs to the floor. Then, we lifted them up and they popped right off the top of the wall. Now that we have all of the studs out of the wall, it's time to address what is called the top plate and the bottom plate. We're going to leave the top plate the way it is for now because we've got some really cool plans for it later. But now, it's time to rip out the bottom plate. I used my handy pry bar and hammer to lift the bottom plate off the floor. I had to get creative in a few places with the pry bar, but above all, I just took my time and focused on not damaging the hardwood flooring. Removing this wall wasn't an extremely tough job, but it definitely took longer than I thought it would. By removing the wall, we now have a massive 500 square foot room. Whether you're flipping houses like us, or just want your home to feel bigger and brighter, demoing a wall is a great way to add value and wide open spaces to a home. And now you know how to do it right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and let us know in the comments any questions you have. 
And if you want to try out any of the tools we use in this video, we left links in the description below, as well as some links to additional articles to help you out with other demolition projects. And if you want to see more how-to videos with Cody and me, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned to the Lowe's YouTube channel. Thanks guys.